Coming to you live from Bangor, Maine. Now it's time for... Let's Meet the Game Dame! And here's your host, Jen Shepard! Hey, good evening and welcome to Meet the Game Dame! I am Jim Shepard during the week, but on Monday nights I transform into the Game Dame! I am so excited that you are all here for the final installment of this little run of Meet the Game Dame. I've got a great episode for you. Usual, I am joined by the amazing John Seidenberg. You can't see him, but you can see everything that he is doing. And also, as always, that voice of Velvet Fog giving us the score throughout the evening, Reed Davis. Say hi, Reed. Hello, hello. Hi. So Reed will be keeping score and you'll hear from him throughout the show. I hope you are ready to play tonight because we're actually doing a crossover episode between Improv Acadia and Penobscot Theatre Company. For the last two seasons, Penobscot Theatre Company has produced shows by Improv Acadia and we have begun to share audience members as well as talent. It is very exciting. So I'm going to introduce you to tonight's contestants. The first is John Allen Criz. He is a retired chemist. Don't you dare call him an engineer. And a fan of all things improv. Hi, John. Hi, Jen. Nice to see you and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Woo! All right. Coming to you all the way from Islesford. She's a potter, a painter, a singer, and an improviser, as well as a mom, Caitlin Miller. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you ready? Thank you. I am so ready. This is a dream come true. Well, for me too. Oh, our third contestant, he is a photographer of all things natural as well as a self-proclaimed collector of bones. It's none other than Edwin Barkdahl. Hey, Jen. Hey, that sounds creepy, but that's what you call yourself, right? It, I am what I am. Exactly. And you can't be anything else. So don't try. Just be yourself. The fourth contestant is a man who absolutely loves Bar Harbor. He's an improviser and he works in information technology. It's Jordan Core. Oh, everybody. Hi. Welcome, Jordan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you are here tonight. Are the four of you ready to play Meet the Game Dame? Let's go. Totally All good. right. Yeah. The first round is trivia. Let me tell you, there's going to be two rounds of trivia. In each round, there will be three questions. The first round, each right answer you get is worth one point. In the second round, each right answer you get is worth two points. When you get a right answer, you'll hear this sound. Now, you have to wait to raise your hand, and that's how you'll signal if you want to answer. Wait to raise your hand until the question is fully read, and then I'll call on you. But guess what? I don't house trivia. I'm not smart enough to do that. No, I had to find a man, a mild-mannered assistant technical director by day, Zach Whitenack, who on Monday nights transforms into the Lord of the Lord. Welcome, Lord of the Lore. Hello. Hello, Dame Game. Looking handsome as usual. Are you ready to put these contestants through their paces? I am indeed. I have a set of questions that I'm excited to get into. Let's do it. Yeah. So for our first round, the theme will be potpourri. For the first question, how long did the Hundred Years War last? Was it a hundred years? Ninety years? 150 years or 115 years? I saw Edwin's hand first. 150 years. I'm sorry, that is not correct. <laughs> oh, Caitlin! 100 years. I'm sorry, that is also not correct. <laughs> not the right answer! John or jo Jordan? 90 years. No, that is also oh, not correct. <laughs> Uh, can you read them again? It's the one that's left. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. It is 115 years. Good job. Good job. The one thing I'll tell you folks is raise your hand a little closer to your face so that I can see it. Otherwise, I won't call on you. I love your hands. Let's go. Wonderful. On to the second question. Who flew for 43 years without a pilot's license? That's Was it dangerous. Amelia Earhart, Charles Lindbergh, Orville Wright, or the Red Baron? Jordan. Let's try Orville Wright. 
That is correct. Orville Wright flew for 43 years without a pilot's license. Go figure. And fi for our final question of the first round, what fruit has the most calories? Is it the banana, the avocado, the kiwi, or the pomegranate? Edwin, I saw his hand first. It's only fair. I'm, I'm going to go with avocado. That is correct. The avocado is the most calorically dense fruit. Calorically and that would conclude. Yes. That would conclude round number one. On to round two. Our theme will be improv questions. Uh oh. For the first question, what was the name of the improv group that founded the Second City? Was it the Players Workshop, the Compass Players, Yes and Today? Or the Herald Commission? Edwin, I saw you first. The Herald Commission. I'm sorry, that is not ah! correct. John, I saw your hand. Go, John. Uh, the Compass Players. Correct. It was the <laughs> Compass Players. And for question number two. Besides Chicago, what other city does Second City have a theater? Is it Toronto, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, or Montreal? John. Toronto. Correct, it is Toronto. On a <laughs> roll. And for the third and final question of trivia, Improvocadia was founded in what year? Was it 2004, 2005, 1999, or 2009? Jordan. 2004. Correct, it was 2004. Oh, that was so good. Reed, what are the final scores for the trivia round, please? Starting out strong and taking the lead is John with five points. Coming in second is Jordan with three points. In third, Edwin with one point. <laughs> and unfortunately, not, able, not being able to get on the board was Caitlin. Oh no, Caitlin, I'm so sorry. Please, please know how much I love you. And I'm going to send you a personalized card as well as a sticker from Penobscot Theatre Company. And I'll include something special since you're all the way out there on Islesford. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for playing. Let's blow our kisses. We miss you. Uh, well, here we are going to go on to our second round. This is called Wrangle the Triangle. Now, the way that this works is John is going to place a triangle on the screen, and it is going to have six squares. You can see it right now. Each square represents the number of points that it is worth, and I am going to try to get you to guess what is behind each of those squares. We're going to have 60 seconds on the clock, and I have that long to get you to guess all six. And that's what I hope. And let's see. Our first contestant is John Allen. Hey, John, any questions? No questions. Okay, then let's put 60 seconds on the clock and let's see if I can get you to guess these. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is like milk, yogurt, ice cream. Dairy products. That's exactly right. Oh, this is uh, checking, savings. Hello, teller. Oh, I'd like to make a Bank accounts, banks, savings accounts. Yeah, exactly, that's exactly right. Oh, these, they have eight legs and they spin well. Fighters. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Oh, this one might be harder. This is, uh, it involves uh, yarn, and also you can curl, and you can pull one over. Yo, very good, John, very good. Oh, this one, my favorite animal, uh, meow, and you know Cat. I have one. Yeah, that's exactly right. Good to know me. And this is uh, a place where a lot of people, it's very cold. You need a Sherpa and oxygen to go there. Mountain climbing. Yeah, but it's the biggest one. It's the one Mount everybody Everest. wants. That's exactly right. Whoa, John Allen coming in strong, getting all six. Reed, what is his score? Sweeping the triangle, he gained himself 21 points for a total of 26 points. Whoa, John Allen's the man to beat. Let's bring Edwin to the screen. Edwin, are you ready to wrangle that triangle? I am ready, although John has really put the uh, screws on tight here. He has, you are exactly right. But don't worry, uh, Edwin, Edwin, I gotcha. Now, do you understand any questions? You know what we're doing? Can we start at six? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. It depends. How much do you want to bribe me? Let's start at one. Okay, great. Are you ready? Six 
60 yep. seconds on the clock. Okay, great. This is a flightless bird, lives in the Arctic. Kiwi. They live kiwi. in the Arctic. Kiwi, kiwi. Oh, lives no, in the black Arctic? And white. Yeah, black and white, black and white. Penguin, penguin, penguin. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, this is something that uh, we would do. We would get in the car and we'd head out across the country. We would drive, we'd make, take a trip, a cross country trip. What, what do you call it when you drive instead of fly? You call it a... A drive, a... You're on a, a highway, a, you're on a, a car highway. trip, a car trip, a... A... a, 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 a road trip. Okay, a road great. Trip. These, these two women, they went on a big adventure. At the end, they Elma drove their Louise. car up the... Yeah, that's very good. Okay, this is, uh, this is something that happens every year. Little girls show up outside grocery stores and their parents will be like, do you want to order? Here's a form. Samoa. cookies. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, this involves eggs and rabbits. Okay, eggs. Easter, Easter, Easter bunny. That's exactly right. Uh, and this is something, the more you eat, the more you toot. It's a magical fruit. Beans. Yeah, <laughs> like beans. I don't know if the time ran out. I wasn't looking. Okay. I, I, I read what points does Chuck Goodwin have? Well, sweeping the triangle as well, he has a total of 22 points. All right, I got to get Jordan to sweep this triangle. Jordan, come on to the screen. Jordan, yeah, wow. yeah, the bar's set high. I got to do it. Let's I go. know you can do it. I know you can do it. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Let's go. All right, these can be hot, but they can also be sweet. It's a vegetable, although actually it's a fruit. But yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, this is uh, on, on, around April 15th. You talk to this tax person there at H&R Block. What'd you say? Tax account. Tax account. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. All right. Uh, this is uh, what I'm wearing, and it, it can be couture, but it can also be off the rack. A dress. But it's oh. also it's more than that. It's the biggest idea of the whole thing. Like Wig. Vogue is about this. Uh, Mademoiselle Fashion. is about this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, these they live in the ocean, and they're huge. They're some Whales. of the biggest creatures. Yeah, Whales. that's right. That's right. Uh, this is, you can have it in dark. You can have it in milk. You can have it in Chocolate. white. Chocolate. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, oh, this is like chips. Corn nuts, um, Snacks. Snacks but it's like, but it's typically like chips, corn Crunchy. nuts. Crunchy. Yeah, that's right, crunchy. Oh, oh, we all we did it. We all did it. Right. <laughs> all right, Reed. What are the final scores for our three players? Taking the lead now is John with twenty six points. Coming in second is Jordan with twenty four points, and finishing third is Edwin with twenty two points. But Edwin, you did so good, 22 points. Come on, Bone Collector, that was great. Well, Edwin, we will miss you, but I will send you a card as well as a sticker from Penobscot Theater Company. Thank you for playing Meet the Game Game. Let's blow him kisses. Woo! Bye. Yep. Bye. Well, Jordan and John, the two J's, I am very excited to have you here. Are you all ready to play? What do you say? Ready. Let's go. All right, let's bring to the screen our celebrities that are joining us tonight. First of all, she is a teacher as well as one of the owners of the Bug House Theater in Chicago. It's Shelby Burton. Hi, Shelby. Yeah. And then we have, uh, she is a stand-up and an improviser in New Orleans. And you can also hear her on Life Raft, which is on New Orleans Public Radio. And that's Lauren Malara. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Wow. And then we have the star of Deck the Ball and Deck the Balls and a Kick in Your Dickens, as well as a Bon Vivant. That's his own word. Mike Treeman. Hi, Mike. Bon Vivant. Bon Vivant. Excuse yes, me. Bon Vivant. Okay. And then <laughs> we have the owner of Fair Play Communications, Andy Enninger. Hello, Andy. Hey, everyone. Also, Bon, not as much beat Vivant. <laughs> but still, but the bond, less vivant, yes. more bond. bond. How about you, Shelby? Are you a bond and a vivant as well? Uh, I just like bonbons. You like bonbons? <laughs> Lauren, what's your take on the whole bon vivant situation? I like everything and everybody. Me too. I'm with you. These folks all have in common that they have also all worked at Improv Acadia. They are extremely funny and wonderful humans, each and every one of them. Thank you for being with me here tonight. All right, let's bring John Allen back to the screen. John, you are going to get a chance to play What Do You Say? The way this works is I'm going to read you a question with a fill in the blank. You'll have some time to think about what you'd like to say to fill in that blank. Meanwhile, celebrities, you'll write down what you think he's going to say. It might work like this. I would say, Hungry Hal has such a great appetite. He can eat anything. Yesterday, he ate a whole, and how might you fill in the blank, John? 
Pineapple. Pineapple, exactly. Didn't even peel it, just ate the pineapple. It's perfect. Okay, let's read the first question. You ready, John? All ready. right. Silly Stan never looks both ways when he crosses the street. Last week, he didn't even see the blank. I'll read it again. Silly Stan never looks both ways when he crosses the street. Last week, he didn't even see the blank. So while John is thinking of his answer, I'll just let folks know, this is the last week of flying solo. And if you've not seen the show at Penobscot Theater, it's wonderful. People are saying it's like being back in the theater and it's 12 very personal stories. So come get some good feels, you know, and see the show. All right, celebrities, when you are ready, throw your thumbs up, your thumbs up, and I'll know that you are ready. Yes, Lauren, Andy, gotcha. Shelby, Shree is still, and Mike's got it too. Awesome. John, let me read the question. You'll tell me how you're going to fill in that blank. Silly Stan never looks both ways when he crosses the street. Last week, he didn't even see the blank. John, what do you say? The bus. Bus, <laughs> exactly. That would be dangerous. Let's see if we have a match. Man, Andy, do we have a match? Well, sort of. Does this count? Finding my light. The bus stop? I don't know. I don't think that's the bus. It doesn't count. Not a match. Oh. Sorry, Andy. All right, Mike, let's see if we got a match. What'd you say? The street. The street. <laughs> sure. He couldn't even look at the street. He was standing on it. Why would he look Sorry, at Sorry, John. It? Sorry, that's John. All right. Lauren, what do you say? I said he didn't see the Mardi Gras float. But for real, <laughs> please do not come down here for Mardi Gras. <laughs> Thank you for that PSA, Lauren. And do not travel right now, folks. Shelby, what do you say? Well, I said the school bus. I am going to call that a match. That is a match for John Allen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ring the bell. Good work, John Allen. And let's bring Jordan back to the screen. Jordan, are you ready? I am ready. Good. Okay, great. Here we go. You know the deal. Mad Mitzi loves to yell and stomp her feet. She stomps her feet so hard that everyone gets a blank. I'll read it again. Mad Mitzi loves to yell and stomp her feet. She stomps her feet so hard that everyone gets a blank. All right, think of how you'd fill in that blank. Pretty excited about Mad Mitzi. She must have like very powerful calves. I have to assume, like superhuman calves. That's what I'm imagining right now anyway. I don't know about the rest of you. All right, when you're ready, actors, our celebrities throw up your thumbs and then I will know. Ooh, Lord, it's quick on the draw. Andy too, and Shelby, and Shree. All right, Jordan, let me read the question to you. Mad Mitzi loves to yell and stomp her feet. She stomps her feet so hard that everyone gets a blank. What do you say? Wow, this is a tough one. I'm gonna go with a headache. Oh. Headache. Okay, mm. let's start with Mike Shreeman. Uh -oh. Mike Shreeman, what do you say? I like headache better than my answer. And I'm not sure I spelled this correctly, but everyone gets a tremor. <laughs> <laughs> sure, lift it up a little higher so we can see it there. A tremor, sure. A tremor. Not a match, not a match. But What about the spelling, though? Is the spelling good? <laughs> yep. Um, Oh, Jordan says it's good, so great. I have no idea. All right, Lauren, what do you say? I said they get a mad Mitzi massage. <laughs> I like that. So she's like stomping her feet on people's backs and stuff. Yeah, she's giving it to them, exactly. All right, Shelby, what do you say? Um, I mean, I don't know if you're going to take it because you. Uh, I know I have these often. Yes. I think that is a headache. I'm That's a headache. Match. All right. Shelby, you're it's, MVP. It's a headache and a half. I tell you that. It's a, headache. it's a headache and something else is what it is. Anyone who has a migraine should know. Andy, what do you say? I said should everyone gets a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it is a litigious society. It's so true. It's That's what so I would true. do. Well, there's one match for you, Jordan. Congratulations. Let's bring John back to the screen. John, here we go. You ready? ready? All right. Classical Katie is a great musician. She has an amazing embouchure, the best in the biz. It's so good, she can even blow a... I'll read that again. Classical Katie is a great musician. She has an amazing embouchure, the best in the biz. 
It's so good, she can even blow a blank. And while you're all thinking, I just want to let you know about the show that's coming up at Penobscot Theater on February 7th. It is The Tiniest Librarian by the amazing Brittany Parker. This is the fourth show in our family subscription. And if you don't have a subscription, guess what? Tickets are only $20. The show is so wonderful. And this is everything that Brittany Parker does. All right, let's go back and see if our celebrities have their answers. Folks, are you ready? Thumbs? Oh, Lauren is writing something. She's writing a novel for me. She's the told story of this game. All right, thumbs all around. Okay, John, are you ready? I'm Classical ready. Classical Katie is a great musician. She has an amazing embouchure. The best in the biz. It's so good, she can even blow a blank. What do you say? Bubble. A bubble. All right, Lauren, I'm coming to you first. Lauren, what do you say? What's an embouchure, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like her mouth, the, the thing that she, I did it for Shreeman, who used to play the tuba. Inside joke. Uh, is that your answer? Is what's it? She can blow a what's an embouchure? Perfect. I love it. I agree. <laughs> what the hell is it? I don't even know. All right, Shelby, let's see. What do you say? I said blow a gasket. Ooh, good one. <laughs> Very good one, really good one, but not a match for the first time. Andy, what do you say? Well, I said it was so good. She could even blow a bubble out the back. I'm gonna call that a match. That's a match. It's got the word bubble in it. It's got the word bubbles. No bus stop. You know what I'm saying? All right, Shreeman, what do you say? First of all, extra points to the game, Dame, for using embouchure in a question. <laughs> Uh, Lauren, and I'm sure is the muscles of the mouth, so you can blow through a mouthpiece. Ooh, okay. And I only figured I would be... Show, Mike. It's only a half-hour show, Mike. It's only a half-hour show. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, being an instrumentalist myself, I know that the toughest I'm sure is for the French horn, which ironically is also referred to as the bubble. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, I'm not going to call that a match, and you're lucky the show isn't over. John, let's go to credits. The show is over. Uh, <laughs> thank, you, Mike. thank you for lecturing us all. All right, that's one match for you. Jordan, back to the screen. All right, Jordan, you ready? All right. Dazzling Dana dresses up like a mirror ball every day. Last week, she was so dazzling, she blinded a blank. I'll read it again. Dazzling Dana dresses up like a mirror ball every day. Last week, she was so dazzling, she blinded a blank. Okay, while folks are thinking, I'll talk about how I had to look up the word embouchure to know how to spell it, because I would have spelled it completely different. If you ask me, that's a weird spelling of that word. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, just throw up your thumbs and I will come back to you. Oh, good. Oh, Shelby's still thinking. That's all right, Shelby. Don't worry. You take the time you need. <laughs> it's just like the hold and the thumb and the hold. That's perfect. You ready? All right. Let's read the question. Dazzling Dana dresses up like a mirror ball every day. Last week, she was so dazzling, she blinded a... What do you say, Jordan? Well, I'm going to go with the alliteration and say Dazzling Dana blinded a discotheque. Jack, the whole damn thing. Okay, I mean, darn. Okay, Shelby, <laughs> what do you say? Is that a puppy? Oh. <laughs> I have a blind dog at my house. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. She earned it. She's <laughs> she's like 25 years old. Wow. Kevin has lived a very good life and is still living a very He's best still living. life. You can't hear or see. No, but she's happy, blissfully happy. Okay, so a puppy, but not a match. It made us all feel sad and then glad. All right, Andy, what do you say? <laughs> well, I'm in adjacent territory with Disco Diva. Oh, oh I good don't answer. Know. Do you think that's a good answer? Lauren, what do you say? Should I call it a match? I think so, yeah. All right, Lauren, <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Match. <laughs> All right, Shreem, what you. do you say? Mike Shreeman, what do you say? I'm jealous of everybody else's answers. Uh, uh, Jordan, uh, you had me at alliteration, but you lost me at bat. You blinded <laughs> well, a bat. A bat. Uh, sure, sure. Not a match, but an interesting answer. Lauren, what Thank do you, you say? I said, Mardi Gras float, for real, stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said Herb was sure, though. 
You shouldn't say, because I'm sure that people should stay home and not go to Mardi Gras, right, Lauren? Uh. <laughs> now I'm, I, now I have to be booted off my home show. All right, let's bring John Allen back to the screen and see what happens. Hi, John. This is your final question. Here we go. Outdoor Otto loves to go swimming in Echo Lake. He swam so far that he ended up in blank. I'll read it again. Outdoor Otto loves to go swimming in Echo Lake. He swam so far that he ended up in blank. Now, I want to tell you folks, you can become a contestant on this show. All you have to do is go to our website, notscottheater.org backslash games and sign up. I need contestants for the second run of the show, which starts March 22nd. All right, let's go back and see if our celebs have their answers for us. How you doing, folks? Thumbs up. Lauren, quick on the draw. Andy, quick on the draw. Uh, Shelby and Mike. All right, John, you ready? Outdoor Otto loves to go swimming in Echo Lake, located on MDI. He swam so far that he ended up in blank. John, what do you say? The ocean. The ocean. That is a long way away. A long way away. All right, Andy, going back to you. What do you say, Andy? I went the other direction. Vermont! He <laughs> <laughs> ended up in Vermont. Not a match, but very funny. All right, Shreeman, Mike Shreeman, what do you say? I'm still jealous of everyone else's answers, but I stuck with the alliteration and I went with Silent Swamp. <laughs> As opposed to the Loud Swamp, I guess. Well, that goes and the echo goes so far it becomes silent. I get you. Actually, Which, that makes a lot of sense. Also, yeah. I know this is a short show, but a lot of people refer to the ocean as hey, moving on the to Silent Lauren Swamp. Moving on Lauren Millar <laughs> answer. Lauren, what do you say? Well, I personally know because I love going swimming in Echo Lake. You can swim so far that you wind up in trouble. <laughs> it's true. It is true. You can get in trouble in that lake. Not a match, but Shelby, what do you say? I mean, mine went off of personal experience. So you swim so far that you end up on the airplane that is not supposed to make a water landing while you're swimming in Echo Lake. <laughs> that is a true story, folks. Like it just turned into the moth because that has actually happened to Shelby and her husband, Joe. Well, John, no answers, but all extremely amusing answers. Extremely amusing. All right, let's bring Jordan back for his final question. Jordan, here we go. Wilting okay. Wanda can't grow any plants, house or otherwise. They will because she blanks them too much. Wilting Wanda can't grow any plants, house or otherwise. They will because she blanks them so much. Oh my gosh. I have a few house plants that I have managed to get to live through COVID. It's been pretty great. A passion of mine to clean the air with plants. When you folks are ready, throw up your thumbs so that I know. Truman, I feel like you're looking up answers. You keep glancing at the screen. Thumbs up from Andy and Shelby and Lauren. You got any house plants there, Andy? You got a bunch of house plants, don't you? Yeah, you. You got house plants? Look out. Oh, thank you for showing me. There's that LA sun. Andy's in Los Angeles, everybody, where it's nice and warm and they're not expecting a storm. Truman, you got it? Yeah. Andy's in oh. Los Angeles? Yeah, Andy's in Los Angeles. Wow, in New Orleans. Yeah, Mazel, exactly, Mazel. All right, let's read this final question. Wilting Wanda can't grow any plants, house or otherwise. They will because she blanks them too much. Jordan, what do you say? Well, I'm gonna go with the alliteration. I thought about washing, but I'm gonna keep it simple and go with the obvious waters. She waters them too much, a common mistake. Shreeman, gonna start with you. What do you say? I was really trying to get a match, Jordan. <laughs> uh -oh. I said she talks to them too much. Aww. Aww. Good answer, though. <laughs> I know when my wife talks to me too much, I wilt a little bit. Same. Yeah. Uh, great. That was everybody was like, wah, wah. <laughs> All right, Lauren, what do you say? I said because she neglects them so much with her travel plans to New Orleans, let this serve as a cautionary tale. <laughs> 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 trying to tell us not to come to Mardi Gras. Wait, I'm not sure was, I that, get it. was that a match? <laughs> <laughs> not a match, but it is the moth again. All right, Shelby, <laughs> what do you say? What do you say, Shelby? What do you say? I said waters. Whoa! Oh! Shelby, match. 
Thank you. Thank you. Andy All right, Andy. What do you say, Andy? Well, I'm hungry. It's lunch late time, so I said nibbles. Oh, she nibbles on her plants too much. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. Well, uh, Reed. Uh, well, first of all, let's thank our celebrities for coming on board. I'll thank you, Alice, later as well. That concludes What Do You Say? And Reed, let's hear the final scores. Where do they stand? Well, it has been an incredibly close race. But our runner-up with 27 points is Jordan. And John is our winner with 28 points. Whoa! whoa, whoa. All right. Jordan, as the runner-up, you are going to receive a $10 gift certificate to the Portland Pie Company in Bangor, which I hope you will be able to use when you visit Maine next time. They have excellent pizza, and it was provided uh, by the, uh, at their courtesy. You know, like, I mean, they are like a sponsor of the show. Congratulations, awesome. Jordan. But Thank let's you. hear it for John Allen Grizz, who is the winner! Woo! Yeah. Oh, you are going to get a t-shirt from the Portland Pie Company, as well as a gift certificate of your choice from either Penobscot Theater Company, Valentine Shoes, Natural Living Center, 11 Central, or Wicked Brew. Congratulations, John. How does it feel? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Let's hear it for the Lord of the Lord. Thank you for being here, sir. You were, as were always, wonderful. And he will be back with us when we come back on March 22nd. Let's hear it for our celebrities. For Shelby, Mike, Andy, and Lauren. Thank you for coming. Oh, and let's hear it for our contestants. Let's bring them up. We've got Caitlin, Edwin, John Allen, and Jordan. Thank you, you guys. Thank you so much. Well, that concludes this episode. You're welcome. This episode of Meet the Game Dave. And this run, we are going to take a one-week break, and then we'll be back with Dish and Drag in uh, the middle of February. I don't have the date on me. And then Meet the Game Dave will be back on March 22nd. Please be a contestant on this show. Go to penobscottheater.org backslash games and sign up. It's easy. You provide your name and your address, and I email you back. It's so easy. Uh, you guys, I shall and always shall remain your friend. I mean, the game dame. I'll see you next.